Hey guys, welcome back to Coffee with Braz for 2022. This episode is brought to you by Victorian Responsible Gambling Foundation. Now, episode one, you thought I'd be speaking to a footballer considering AFLW is just around the corner, but I'm throwing a curveball. We are speaking to a netballer, not just a Collingwood netballer. Last year, she was a Sydney, oh, sorry, a New South Wales Swifts Premiership player. This year, she's going to be wearing the black and white, but in a couple of days, we'll be seeing her in the green and gold representing Australia at the Quad Series in England. Her name is Sophie Garvin. She thinks this is a stitch up. It is not. She is one of the funniest people you'll ever meet, one of the best teammates you'll ever meet. She's a laugh. She thinks she's serious, but she's totally not. I actually can't wait this year for everyone to get to know her, get to meet her. She's someone that you'll just fall in love with instantly. She's a long bomb specialist. She's normally a goal shooter, but we're probably going to see her at goal attack this year. Get ready. This is part one of Sophie Garvin. <laughs> Not awkward at all. Uh. Right, hey, so thanks uh, for coming on. Uh, you're actually my first guest this year. We were going to start with footy, but thought you're playing for the Diamonds. We're, we're pre-recording it, but right now you'd be in camp. Welcome to episode one. Thanks, Braz. I'm very humbled, honoured, privileged to be the first guest of 2022. Mate, lucky you didn't know. Like, I thought you'd come in here, demand a spot straight away. You probably didn't even heard of my podcast, but let's be real. Yeah, can we actually, like, ju- like tell everyone that I have not, like, I've not, I have not I haven't even heard about the podcast, really. So Get out. The There's fa- a door. So right. The, Get out of here. I, We're not friends. I have not asked to be here. Like, this has not been me pushing, trying to get my name out there. Like, you've asked me, okay? I got told it was in your contract to be number one, so that's why you're really here. Don't no, me. but I'm, I'm glad you're here. I'm, I know you've had um, a lot of success with the Swifts. Um, you definitely look better in black and white, so so glad that you're here. Um, but first of all, it is called, because you don't know, it's called Coffee with Braz. So what is your coffee order? My coffee order is like a classic, like Melbourne standard girl. So I think I'm going to fit in very well here. Oat cap. Oat cap. Oat cap. Is, that, is that classic oat Melbourne? I feel like oat milk's just like the trend at the moment. I'm all about getting on the You're trend. You're all about trends. <laughs> <laughs> You're all about TikToks as well. Uh, yeah, good. Um, but yeah, I feel like that's like standard. But normally I'd say like a small one as well because you want to get like Although the ones in Melbourne, I feel are, the smalls are really small. So I normally, I'll go like a regular here, but normally I don't get a large because then you can have two if you only get a smaller one. Nice. And so That's you've come, I know you've come from Sydney, but um, for people that don't know, Sophie is originally from WA. WA coffees were a lot more expensive. Um, did you drink coffee back then or did it happen when you moved to Sydney? Uh, yeah, I did drink coffee back then. Um, probably more when you got into like a netball training sort of scheme, you kind of need a bit more. Um, but it was great because when I was home doing my isolation after the camp um, earlier this year, or last year, um, mum was had to go down and buy my coffees. So I was getting like coffee deliveries every day from mum, so I didn't pay a cent, it was great. Well done mum, <laughs> shout out. Well, mum was there. Well, I, honestly, I wish my mum was caught up because it's too far away, but Uber Eats is available, so yeah. come on mum. Um, so you've moved to Collingwood and I know with, with Coffee with Braz we normally delve deep or we go younger but you're going to hit up again later in the netball season but I'm really intrigued about your move to Collingwood. You're successful um, in the Swifts, you won two premierships which is unreal. Um, would have been a tough call to, to leave a team that not like one of you have been successful but you had such close friends over there as well. Yeah definitely. It was really tough decision um I still I was actually on the phone to Bryony um last night so I still have like a really good relationship with her and everyone at the club um they were like my family moving over when I first moved over to Sydney um it was obviously tough I was only like 20 so um I made like a family with all of them so it was yeah a tough decision to leave but I think one that I needed personally not just for my netball but um life outside of netball um, but yeah, I'm, I'm so excited to be here. I've loved literally every moment being in Melbourne and at the club. Um, so yeah, I'm excited for 2022 and what we can do on court. Look at you. Like, Sophie doesn't realise as well, guys. She's trying to be professional. She's trying to say all the <laughs> right things. Sophie is like the larrikin already of this team. She said no, she's I'm not. I'm so professional. Oh, look at her. Already so professional. <laughs> Just wait until she hears like, does TikTok have a sound? I don't know. She sees a TikTok and this kid is <laughs> dancing, doing everything. But on, oh, for people that didn't know as well, Bryony is um, the Swifts coach, um, so it's great um, you have a really good relationship with her, so hopefully you get a better relationship with Richo so we don't lose you. Um, but TikToks, you've introduced me to this different world. 
Why? You're like the queen, but why? I wouldn't say I'm the queen. Um, I don't know. I just love how, like, I feel like Instagram's very, like, you go to, like, put your best photos and, like, I don't know, I feel like it's very more formal. Whereas I think TikTok, you can just, like, do whatever you want. It's kind of funny. And, yeah, I don't know. But do you post the first one or do you do, like, 100 and then post the best one? So it's still pretty Oh, you Instagram. still do 100. Especially when it's the dancing ones because I'm not... I've like got no coordination when it comes to dancing, but I don't know. It's just funny. Like I literally spend so much time on TikTok just scrolling. I've learned so much from TikTok, like recipes, just the news, like everything. It's it's educational. What's your best? Like what's your best TikTok you've ever done though? <sighs> My, the one with the most views I have is like this really dumb one of like me, Maddie Proud and Maddie Turner, like doing this stupid like dance like in hoodies. It's just so dumb. But I like made heaps after we won the final. And Did you cop some slack for? Yeah, I caught some slack for, but it was so funny. So, um, yeah, that were probably the best ones because I was probably a little bit intoxicated, um, so I didn't care as much either. <laughs> I have seen them and they are pretty funny. And if we went in from your ship, you have full license to take over the Collingwood page, <laughs> not just your own, because they were awesome. Um, but how do you find like fans on like social media? Do you like? I know other sports probably get more slack than we do but how do you go go on that with I guess do you get stuff like that on TikTok um like I got a little bit but like it's a lot of people just have like no idea um but I just yeah I feel like we are so lucky as netballers in a way that we're not as well known so we don't get um get as much stuff like there's more just like weirdos in your DMs asking you weird stuff and like calling you weird stuff but um like hello to all the weirdos out there like yes i feel the worst stuff for us is just all the netty fans who genuinely care is like what they write on twitter and stuff like that and i was talking about it the other day that like even though like it's so little but like if you read something and it's not what you wanted to hear you just start reading into it and you're like oh my god like you start thinking that and i remember like over the contracting time when there was like a lot of like netty twitter was like blowing up about where people are going and people were saying stuff about me and a lot of it was like really good stuff but then there was a few comments that i was like oh like they were like not the nice comments and i was like read into it and i was like why am i even reading into it like this person knows nothing about me they know nothing they like, literally see what we do on 60 minutes of like a netball game like you know nothing about the other like 99 percent of my life and i was like why am i getting so attached to this comment so like I, we don't get that much but it's still like all it takes is one yeah Yeah, all it takes is one that's and that's one thing i think for me i've had to probably teach my family rather than me like we've obviously grown up in it so you're okay with it but i know if my mum or dad were to ever read one comment like they it would break their heart and like they would be so mad they'd probably write back and i'd be like stop like but (laughs) it's yeah it's a different world now and i guess you being younger you've probably grown up with it and know how to deal with it better than a lot of other people especially parents so I don't know your, your parents probably fine because you've got your sister as well who plays elite basketball yeah so you're probably getting it from all different angles um, but I want to talk to you about this year for you personally and, and the Swifts I'm not, I love the Swifts it's, it's not it's, a hidden, it's not hidden at all um, but it was tough for you because well one you won the premiership so that's brilliant but you did a lot of it on the road you had your coach in isolation for a few of the games um, you were traveling from state to state I know, like, we as Collingwood and um, Vixens, like, being in Melbourne, we did it tough as well. But you guys, the fact that you could do all that and still win your premiership, like, what do you reckon that comes down to? Oh, yeah, we had a really tough year. I think it was so funny because in 2020, everyone was like, oh, like, just enjoy it because, like, this is never going to happen again. We're never going to have to hub again. Like, it's going to be a -a once-in-a-lifetime experience. Like, this is the hardest it's going to get. And then there was literally, like, when we went, like, I think we were in Adelaide, and it was just one point which I remember when we were like last year was hard so I remember the day actually we got told we we're going on another hub and it was so funny because I was in Sydney um this weekend and we were talking about it we were so excited in my household because like restrictions started coming in so we like we got told like we're not allowed to go to cafes and stuff so we're like we're pretty much housebound anyway and we're like oh like we're getting bored so when they told us they called us like 12 o'clock we had a zoom call and they're like we're going tonight you've got to pack your bags we're going to I think we came I think we went to Queensland first. Yeah, we went to Queensland first. And we were so excited. We're like, oh my God, like, yay, like, we're going to get out of here. Like, we need this, like, excitement in our lives. So we packed our things. We left to Queensland. And then, yeah, it kind of just 
exploded from there and um, we went Queensland, then we came to Melbourne and I was really happy in Melbourne because my sister was here. Um, we were in like nice like friendly apartments. Like, it was just really good. We had settled in Melbourne. We beat fever in Melbourne, so we'd had the bye week. Um, fever were like doing really well. It was really tough. They were undefeated up until yeah, that. Yeah, they were undefeated, yeah, and we ended up beating them by, or oh, we well, up by a fair bit, but then classic super shot. Everyone sinks them when they need to, and um, they caught up, but we still won, so we're pretty happy about that. We had a few like good games, and we were just like, yeah, like we were in a good routine. And then we had another phone call, and we're off to, where did we go? We went to Adelaide, and Adelaide, that's when things really went downhill. So, um, yeah, there was people in our little camp that went to a hotspot in Melbourne, um, and they, yeah, it was pretty tough, more so because we played the game, um, and there's a lot of stuff that's been going on. I know that Swift's like got reported and stuff like that. Um, but just the whole time, I just think it was handled quite poorly in terms of like we got treated like we were like criminals in a way because they'd gone to this hotspot or whatever and it was just like a really tough time. Well, in Adelaide, we so straight after the Giants game, we were literally room bound. Like we weren't allowed to leave our room. We couldn't even see each other. So we were there for like two days I think it was but we had no idea like we didn't know if it was going to be two weeks two days like we didn't know what was happening so I remember you guys were in our hotel and like we did not see you at all it was really tough like I yeah my respect for Bryony just like went through the roof like she ends up so we got out she ends up staying in Adelaide for two weeks with her two little boys with her two little boys in a apartment like it was tiny so like the fact that she did that it was also our team physio as well so her son and her stayed there as well. Um, and then we went to Brisbane and then that's when we kind of settled. That was the last of the moving around, thank God. And I think we just got to the point where it was like, we're not doing all of this to not play finals or not play in that grand final. So I think that was like such a strong drive. And I think we we're just such a tight knit group after that because we only really had each other. Like, there were so many restrictions on us, like you guys would know, like we weren't even allowed to go to Coles to get stuff. So like, we literally were only allowed to be with each other. I think that was the real um, like driving force behind it. And it was just, yeah, we just kept in such a tight knit group in that environment. And you've won two grand finals. What one was better having that, like I guess the first grand final, you didn't have to isolate, COVID wasn't even a thing to, to going through this. Can you can you compare them or is it just completely oh, I think different? Completely different. I think like, the first one in 2019 was like an insane, like unreal experience. Um, like I had my family there, I had my mum there, my auntie, my nana. Um, we just had like, when we walked out, I remember we walked out in um, like at Brisbane, the arena there. And like there was, it literally felt like a Swiss home game. Like we got like, literally as we were walking out before the game, like when we'd go to do our shooting or extra warm up and stuff, that like the crowd just like erupted and we were just like, oh my God, like this is insane. Um, and then, yeah, winning that was, like, so good. But I don't think we appreciated it as much because we were yeah. kind of, like, we hadn't played finals. You are all young We were all well. very young. Um, we hadn't beaten Lightning. Like, obviously, we appreciate it, but it was kind of like, okay, we won. And then we all went off-season, went our separate ways. We kind of did a review, and I remember walking out of the review, and I was like, did we just win or did we just lose? Like, we were just so hard on ourselves, which was a good thing because we were like, what can we do better? But I was like, we need to enjoy this more. So I think one thing we did in 2021 was make sure we enjoyed it more than, like, really embraced it. And we did stay an extra few days um, as a team after the um, grand final. And I think everyone was just, like, really, like, embracing it a lot more. So definitely different. Um, Both games, like, a complete blur, though. Like, you just can't remember what even happened. But, yeah. And then it was great. You won. So going back to um, 2021, you won you find out you've made the Aussie squad. How's that? Yeah, I think it's just something that you, I don't know, I've always had a dream of. I remember when I was at Waves, going through like my goals with like Michelle Wilkins, there was always like the steps, you know, and Diamonds was always at the top. So the fact that to get named in the squad again, it's just an unreal like feeling. And like never, it's never just like a given or like it's never just being like, oh, I've in it once, it's expected and I think I don't know, even for you, you've been in it a few times in and out, so it's like, you know how nice it is when you're actually in it. So I just think, yeah, it's such a cool environment. It's so different to 
like any sort of SSN environment. Um, but yeah, very exciting. Yeah, very exciting. And like you fit in so well there. And like you said, I think the culture there is just great. It's something that it's, yes, different to SSN. You're with each other all year where Diamonds, you're with each other for two weeks here and there, sometimes three with the longest camp ever. Um, but the buzz is like the fact that you get to represent your country is amazing. Even if it's not on court, if you just said camp, it's huge. And you, you're playing, with, you're training with Australia's best, so like that's exciting. So one, congratulations. Um, but two, now you've made the team, well the extra squad where you're going over to England. Um, so when this gets aired, you'll be in camp or potentially in England. Um, hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> it's COVID is um, blowing up at the moment, which everyone knows. Um, but going over there, um, potentially playing um, three other countries, how do you feel about that? Yeah, I'm so excited. I think I've only experienced like playing against New Zealand. and um, I'm That's just, huge. I didn't know that. That's cool. Yeah, so we went to Constellation Cup start of this year. Yeah. Oh my god, that seems like a lifetime ago. Yeah. So um, I haven't. Well, I've, like only juniors have I played against, like England and stuff like that. So I'm so excited. I think I'm super excited to play against New, New Zealand as well. Just I'm sorry, England because we've got so many of their players in our league. Um, I just think it's so exciting. Yeah, I'm just looking forward. I've never been to the UK either, so I'm really looking forward to that. We're well, leaving the summer, heading to probably where it's going to be snowy. Yeah, so I pack know. warm clothes. Yeah, but I think, yeah, like you said, like the group is such a good group, and I think Stacey's come in, and I feel like there's kind of like a new era kind of happening, and um, the culture's definitely changing. I think, you know, we've got Com Games coming up this year, so I think everyone's obviously got their eyes on that. So it's obviously like a really intense environment. Like, we can't lie, everyone wants to be on court, everyone wants to get selected. Everyone wants to go to Com Games um, in July, so I think it's a very intense environment, but it's also like so exciting and just such a good group of girls. Yeah, and what's the lead up? So we're a couple of days out from Christmas. What's your lead up? Um, I know we've got camp um, in Sydney from the 4th to the 8th, and then we fly out. Give us a rundown from here to there. Like, what's your goal? What's your plan? Sorry, not your goal. Plan. So we've got one last training session today, and then we're heading. Uh, well, I've got we've got a day off, and then we're straight back into training. So um, I'm going to be staying here in Melbourne um, until we go into camp on the fifth. Um, but yeah, pretty much training as normal. So there's no real off Christmas period. For us, so yeah, on the court, in the gym, I think some of the Vixens girls are going to come in here, which is great. They can get a taste of the Magpies life. Yeah. Um, <laughs> good luck, girls. Yeah. So that's going to be good. Richo is going to be coming in as well and doing sessions with us, so that's super helpful. Um, but yeah, no break. Christmas 2021 is pretty much out the window yeah. and it's just netball. And what's the, like for um, everyone listening, what are like the restrictions that like we'll have to do? being diamonds um and to be able to go to another country when you can't even get home to perth like what what are things that you have to put in place to make sure you're on that plane and to get back yeah i think it's so funny that i can't even go to perth but i can go to the uk um so pretty much from christmas day if we go to a hotspot get covid like we pretty much can't go so from christmas day until camp we are pretty much it's at your own risk like just don't go anywhere really <laughs> don't <laughs> which is tough when you, you've tough, got to yeah. go to the gym go to training go um, to the shops just yeah. stuff like that get so, petrol yeah it's just being super careful i mean it's the world we live in now so as much as you can restrict yourself and stuff like that you could get it i could get it today someone here could have been to a hot spot so um yeah it's pretty much just laying low and making sure that I get into camp and we can get on that plane and head over. So I think in Sydney as well, we're not even, we pretty much go into a hub, like as soon as we get into Sydney. So pretty it's much- more a bubble, hey? Like yeah. you can't leave. Um, can't leave. When we're in England, like, and, and, and this is like, I know everyone's um, s- struggling with COVID and like for someone for you, you've never been to the UK. <laughs> we're gonna fly all the way to England, to London for you to play a couple games and you won't leave the hotel <laughs> unless we go to the court. Like, so you're going to be able to tell people, I've been to England yeah. and I've seen a hotel room and the court. Like, I know. I was we'll like, have to just yeah. put like Paddington Bear on and pretend we're here outside watching you so you're on a bus. So hit up some virtual reality, like yeah. start walking around. Like, I think we're going to find some pretty funny things to do. I, I was like, you're so excited. I was like, yeah, like, I guess. Yeah. I can't wait for your TikToks. I want like... If it's snowing, you need to like have 
be at the window, pretend you're skiing or something. I feel like, like there's a lot of pressure on these TikToks now. Oh, <laughs> wait, there's no pressure because you're the one putting pressure on us because <laughs> I've never seen so much content come through Collingwood Netball ever and it's okay, all no, of it is you. No. You're, even, you're now blogging, I saw today. That is Patty. I feel like I've already been stitched up. I've been here five minutes. I, I still am the new girl. You're even not the new girl. You, you guys that was used to let me still one. be the new girl. No, I'm the new girl. I'm here. It's only been like six weeks. I'm still new. But I feel like I've just been like handballed like the stitch up role. Like I got it early days of the Swift. They stitched me up with like the media stuff, and I was like, I guess I'm gonna have to do it. And now I'm here. I'm already getting stitched up. <laughs> this is not a stitch up. This is you. I feel like you'll be hosting this um, very soon. <laughs> I'm gonna end it there so you don't take my job. Um, but so all the best for England. I can't. Hopefully we're on court together. I can't wait. Um, to be with you. Enjoy your Christmas. I know this will be out after Christmas. But um, thank you for being here and. You're way better in black and white than you are red. Thanks, Bradley. Oh, good. Thanks, Lady. <laughs> Merry Christmas.